for the air distribution system to be energy efficient, it needs to be cleaned and all of the leaks sealed. The filters help keep the system clean and this middle of the road filter can be upgraded to a filter that also captures chemicals and odors as well as preventing allergens and particulates from entering the air distribution system. There is some internal insulation here that is damaged and then inside the ducts we see an excessive amount of debris so this is creating drag on the airflow as well as adding pollutants to the airstream. And then on the supply side, this metal apparatus called a boot, which is attached to the floor, should be sealed to the floor. And since it's not, that allows crawl space air to enter the home. Inside the air ducts, we see a fair amount of debris. And typically when the system comes on, it releases a little bit of this debris, which is insect parts and mold spores. of cat hair and the problem with having dander and other organic matter in the air ducts is when the humidity levels get high enough then mold will grow as it is on the backside of this supply register. Mold inside the duct work cannot be cleaned. The ducts would need to be replaced, the ones that are mold contaminated. The dryer is interesting because it expels so much air from the home, approximately 150 cubic feet per minute. So it's important to have the dryer vent line straight so that it is able to operate efficiently as well as the dust from behind the dryer cleaned up so that there is not a fire hazard. There are numerous side attics in the home. This particular one is running cooler air underneath the stairs and into the living room walls because some of the wood is not insulated this allows a bridging to happen a bridge to the outside siding so when it gets cold it channels that coldness right into this side attic area which is seen there in blue the same is happening in other side attics where the outlets are not insulated or where their insulation is compressed and again, the wood is exposed, allowing this channeling of either super hot air or cool air. Also, there are gaps in the attic floor on this particular side attic where the water heater is. So that allows the unconditioned air to enter the walls and the ceilings. Essentially, all of the attic wood should be covered. And the best product for that is a foam foil type material so it stops the bridging and reflects the heat. Just another picture showing areas where there's gaps and voids in the insulation. In this particular bedroom there is a cold spot in that back or the front corner. Looks like this is the front right corner of the building. So apparently some insulation is missing there. Also it shows a cooler temperature 63 degrees versus 67 degrees which is standard for your attic however 88.8 .8 degrees is what is coming out of the air duct so the system is able to generate a lot of heat but the lack of insulation in the attic and its lack of air sealing is allowing that cold attic air to enter the home and the same happens with the attic ladder This is another area inside the attic where there's a vertical area, vertical wall, and there's this exposed wood. And so that wood just channels the cold air. In some places, the insulation has been compressed or dislodged, so it should be evened out. Here's an area where essentially most of the wood is covered. You have a slight gap every 24 inches, but this looks significantly better. Here's another shot of areas where it's been compressed. I'm assuming somebody was back in there at one point. The air ducts are a black jacket ducts. They don't have the 
R value that is current code and so there is some energy loss on these ducts shown here in red so if more insulation was added to the attic it could just be blown over these black jacketed air ducts to help retain that heat this is a picture of what we call the internal wall top plates where they are not sealed and so this allows the hot or cold air from the attic to seep into the internal walls and the discoloration of the insulation is evidence that there's ongoing air movement. Here's a shot of the return duct. This is called the collar. In this case the collars are not sealed and so they are pulling in directly attic air into the system. This is a picture of the distribution box where the lack of insulation is causing heat loss into the attic. So the air duct should be sealed. This will help prevent this air loss and if they're sealed with an expanding foam that will help to insulate the areas that need to be sealed also. Here this return duct is not sealed and so it's pulling in attic air and unconditioned heat. Here again you have an area where if there was added insulation to the point of covering the ducts it would be a more efficient attic. The access to the crawl space door is low to the ground so it's causing the door to um, be warped. It would be best if there was rainwater diverter in front of it. It's an open vented crawl space. Um, the challenge with this is that you have a fair amount of moisture and access for animals. Looks like somebody was trying to build a nest to get on into the crawl space and whatever you have in the crawl space in regards to air quality it can sneak into the living area and here's a typical duct that was run um, it's compressed the insulation there's some gaps in it um, you can see the heat coming off the air ducts so if it was a closed crawl space then this heat loss wouldn't be a loss it'd be trapped in the duct or trapped in the crawl space. Here's a duct that's not properly connected and so there's some energy loss happening. So this is common that we see in homes is there are numerous areas where we're constantly losing energy and so it all adds up to increase our carbon footprint and add dollars to the bill. Here is the exterior of a flexible duct and the discoloration is because of mold growth the mold growth occurs because of high humidity and in here is a place where we pulled back the moisture barrier and we can see that it's wet underneath the moisture barrier that trapped moisture then just moves to the side and then increases the relative humidity in the crawl space which is why these gas lines are rusting it's because the humidity at times gets too high the water lines in the crawl space are not insulated so that hot water then transfers its energy into the crawl space. Having a closed crawl space or insulating these lines can give some benefit. This system may be able to be zoned because you've got a supply main trunk that runs all the way down into the crawl space. So it drops down right there as well as the return on the other side. So. HVAC person may be able to zone this system. Here we have a plumbing vent pipe that goes through the attic floor and if you can see the discoloration on the insulation that's because air has been moving through here so when we talk about sealing the attic these are some of the areas that that need to be sealed to stop that air movement. So if you can see the <clears throat> energy coming off the hot water pipes as well as the ductwork. So if there was an insulation liner on the ground instead of the plastic then you'd be able to retain the heat that we're losing off of the air ducts and the plumbing. 
to just keep the crawl space nice and warm.